As uh, we were discussing in the last session that even though we have titled the course as management of new products and services, uh, but in reality the concept of product uh, is multi-layered. So, goods and services both are uh, integrated into this our way of looking at products or you can think in terms of hardware and software. And uh, there are very few pure goods, there are very few pure services, they are all usually a blend. So, we consider as goods and services as a continuum uh, of the concept of product. Now, uh, our aim is now to get to uh, a strategic understanding of uh, products. Uh, to understand products the, as an integral part of an organization's short term, long term strategy. So, before we get to those topics which we will take up in maybe in the next uh, session, uh, I want to introduce to you this uh, some simple facts which are kind of astounding. About 50 years back maybe 50, 70 years back before the second world war. In a year, maybe at the most 100 products were introduced uh, in the world. You take uh, good services all put together, maybe 100. In the next 50 years, maybe every year it, it kept on increasing some thousands of products were introduced in the market every year. Today, the count shows that hundreds of thousands, sometimes close to a million new products, goods, services are introduced into the world market. And it is amazing that of this huge number of uh, new goods and services, maybe 4 or 5 percent succeed. So much effort is put in, yet so little sustainable result comes out of it. Today, we I want you to look at a from a strategic perspective why that happens. First of all, the most, the most reason for failure of a new product is that it is not distinctive in the sense. There are many products which are me too products, which are copycats, but yet they succeed because they make improvements on the earlier pioneering products. To that extent, they are solving customers problems, meeting customers needs better. So, we have no problem with those products, but products which have no differentiation, whether a radical difference or an incremental difference, but no differentiation have really a low chance to succeed in today's highly competitive global market. Until and unless you have a cost advantage, a design advantage, a feature advantage, an advantage coming out of deeper understanding of the customer you cannot succeed. So, the most important point as we have said in insignificant point of difference, but very interestingly this is a little paradoxical that while to succeed a product must have distinctiveness, must be in some way more appealing it also must have points of similarity. So, for example, uh, you know all chairs usually they have four legs. 
Now, within that various kinds of designs by way of comfort, by way of looks, by way of both can be introduced which will succeed. But if you come up with a chair which has got only one leg, that means it is radically getting away from the point of similarity, then very often it will have difficulty to succeed. Unless of course, you make that like a bar stool in front of a, a long table, where such designs have uh, acceptability. So, that means, a product to succeed has in some way to conform to convention, but in many ways it must break the convention. This is the paradoxical challenge and not many companies can uh, manage this challenge. The other thing is that at any point of time in a company, the employees, the management, students in an university, college, even in schools today, people dream of becoming successful entrepreneurs, becoming millionaires by the age of 20 and so on, because there are such examples. So, there are no dearth of dreams about new products. So, this if you see on the left hand side, extreme left that in a company on an average 3000 new ideas are discussed, but most of these are not written down, they are discussed in the cafeteria, they are discussed in meetings. But when somebody is persistent as a champion of a new idea, then the company may actually make it, write it down, uh, put it forward to management, if it is distinctive enough it may go to the patent department and so on. But as you can see from 3000 at that level we have 300 ideas. Now, these numbers are average of a study of com uh, comprising of few hundred companies. So, some companies are have bigger numbers, some companies have smaller numbers, this is an average picture. Most important point here is that from 3000 articulated ideas, sparks, eurekas, only 300 get properly written down and proposed. And then as you can see, out of those 300 maybe uh, you know one fourth or, or so 100 product ideas will be taken up as small projects. Then based on the success you know maybe uh, 10, you see at every stage we are dropping by a factor of almost 10. So, 100 projects are taken up, 10 projects become significant. So, ultimately you can see on the right hand side, extreme right hand side, we have one commercially successful uh, new product. So, 3000 ideas result into one good new product. Fantastic challenge, but the point is because we have only one, you cannot stop ideating. You do need to create more ideas, because if 3000 you can generate 10,000 ideas, it is possible because of this funnel shape, maybe you will have three good successful new products. So, I think from this uh, uh, very interesting uh, research study, you can take two lessons. One is you do need to create more and more good ideas, but those ideas must be written down properly constructed, argued, proposed. So, you need to actually uh, not make it like a one person's eureka like uh, Archimedes is supposed to have shouted eureka but you need to work in teams, look at all different factors and come up with more concrete proposals. The more proposals you have, well constructed proposals, better will be chance of coming up with finally successful uh, new products. And the other thing is uh, you must know 
that not all will succeed. So, therefore, this discipline of maintaining this uh, funnel is important and different companies adopt different uh, processes uh, to manage this funnel and some of those we will uh, discuss uh, later on. Some other reasons why new products fail are uh, inadequate uh, market and product definition before the product development starts. This is very important. As we say in uh, uh, you know uh, just uh, colloquial language that you have to be ready, aim, fire, not the other way round. That means, random firing will not lead to good new ideas because it is very expensive to come up with new ideas and today's in today's world in this hyper competitive world therefore, you have to be very precisely targeted. So, you have to know the customer segment you are approaching, you have to understand that segment deeply, so that you create a value proposition that is truly appealing to that market segment. That is from the market side. And the product itself must be distinctively defined, it must have good user interface, it must have well thought out usability factors. So, you can see here uh, both tangible scientific data based concrete factors need to be considered as well as emotional factors appeal psychological factors need to be considered together they create good user interface good usability good design so we have this whole concept of design thinking where we blend uh, these concepts so we will discuss that so, to summarize some simple questions, any time a particular product idea comes up, you can put this to test, this simple test. First of all, why will anybody buy this product? So, there must be very precise clear understanding, not because you know I have designed this product, so people will buy or we are very famous, our company is very famous, so they will buy. Or um, you know, this person is a famous scientist, so uh, this product will therefore, since he has conceived this product, it will fly. No, you should answer this question, why will anybody buy this product? By answering what jobs will this product perform, what problems of the customer this product will solve, what pains will be taken care of and what new gains will be offered. So, remember these three concepts that pain solving, gain offering and getting some job that the customer wants to get done to do that effectively. Of course, in spite of all these sometimes uh, products fail due to bad timing, which is also a little uh, a, a difficult thing to do sometimes. Like today, this iPhone before that iPod, phenomenally successful introductions. But that same, many of the uh, ideas that have become so successful for which we love iPhone or we loved iPod, were actually introduced by Apple in an earlier product called Newton, which failed because its timing was not right. And its packaging was not right with respect to products available at that time in the market as personal digital assistant. That same a few years later almost with the same idea a product came in a little different packaging with some other interesting user interfaces called Palm Pilot and became very successful. But Palm Pilot also 
gave its gave way and new products came because many of the features which were in palm pilot separately got integrated into the new phones which started coming into the market. So, this evolution we discussed in the earlier uh, session, this also has to be remembered that no success, very few products are perennially successful. The products have to evolve, change, but before anything at the very beginning it must answer these fundamental questions, why will anybody buy this product and next why will they buy it from us, what, what, what is there in us that sets us apart, gives us a claim, rightful claim for successful ownership and introduction of that product. The third question is why will they continue to buy this product, because some products are brilliantly successful at the introduction stage then they die. This also is a, a whole uh, interesting set of discussion which I hope we will be able to take up. Uh, so, you, you have to be very understanding that why people will continue to buy your product. So, why will anybody buy this product, why will they buy from us, why will they continue to buy from us and will they talk about this product to others. Will I get that word of mouth uh, traction? These are four fundamental questions which must be asked to test all ideas. And you can see uh, this is a research uh, study uh, on your screen and as you can see here point of difference or uniquely superior product the top 20 percent winners and the bottom 20 percent losers, the difference is almost 80 percent, 98 percent versus 18 percent. So, that means, the uniqueness and remember I said uniqueness does not mean always a radically different uniqueness, it could be incremental uniqueness uh, is uh, a important factor. The next one is well defined product before the development starts. Sometimes products are bright ideas come, but they are not properly shaped, good research at the design stage is not done. So, as the product starts uh, progressing very expensive reworks become necessary. So, sometimes you launch the product and then you come back to the drawing board, no. Spend as much time as possible at the design stage thoroughly research. And that is why design has become strategic today, because it leads to better success rate. And then I said that why will anybody buy from us means what is our claim to fame, which means that the product must conform to our capability, our research and development, our manufacturing capability, it must have therefore, a synergy or fit. It can stretch, you can stretch your current capability, but it must, it cannot be completely uh, out of the wax. So, you have a toothpaste manufacturer or, or a better example is suppose you are very successful as a bathroom cleaner manufacturer, you have tremendous customer base. Now, the same customer be also buying um, a toothpaste, but because you are successful as a bathroom cleaner, you may not be successful as a uh, tooth cleaner. So, you know there has to be many thoughts with respect to uh, synergy uh, from the, your company's image perspective, the positioning of your current brand with respect to the new brand that you want to create and so on. Uh, or we will discuss these uh, in greater detail later on. And of course, execution, uh, the quality in the final product quality of the manufacturing activities and all that, all these are very important. Uh, so, uh, IDEO a very famous uh, design company in the world has very nicely put this in conjunction with Stanford University, this concept a, a, a pyramid concept of desirability, feasibility and viability. This DVF principle 
is very important at this early stage for a product to succeed. Desirability that takes care of the customer appeal, all these things that we discussed that how distinctive it is, how, how well it solves customers problems, gets customers jobs done. So, that is the from the market side, customer side the desirability. Then comes the question of uh, feasibility in terms of economics, in terms of commerce, in terms of cost versus price possibility and all that. And then of course, it is technical, technical feasibility. You, you cannot actually uh, think of a product uh, which uh, will be uh, like, the, like the storybook like flubber. So, it will actually be just flying uh, defying uh, the law of gravity. Uh, so, maybe at some point in the like today we know that there are uh, magnetically levitated trains which can run at fantastically high speed because it does not have to bear any friction, but that is still quite expensive that technology that cannot be used in everyday uh, vehicle that is used in some uh, high, high vol volume requirement. So, you know there is one in Shanghai or there may be few others now coming up around the world. So, the point is that it has to be technically feasible with your capabilities, your facilities, your resources today. It has to be uh, commercially viable uh, with respect to the, your cost structure, etcetera, uh, availability of uh, raw material and at what price you can source the raw material and so on and above all. So, desirability on top, uh, this viability and feasibility uh, at the two bottom corners. This pyramid is extremely important and in a way this chart that you have in front of you is uh, an embodiment of that DVF principle in more detail. Here you as, as you see that same uh, diagram that I showed a little earlier that it goes through a number of stages that is how we manage the funnel. This is one of the uh, funnel ideas this idea generation then screening and evaluation of the ideas then analysis of the business potential development market testing and then finally, commercialization. So, it is the same DVF principle taken in stages and this particular diagram shows a, a step by step approach, but in reality today it is not actually this linearity quite difficult to achieve this in fact, this, this may be a recipe for disaster. So, what we say is that these stages instead of considering them as one after the other and you know one stage finishes you hand over to the other stage this used to be the old thinking. Today we say that this uh, steps of strategy development for a new product idea generation screening business analysis development market testing commercialization are very interactive. So, there will be uh, many uh, sort of so there will be many you need to go back and forth you need to go uh, around this. Uh, that the, so, there will be multiple stages where uh, you will have to uh, sometimes jump one stage to the other stage. So, therefore, at this development stage you may actually parallelly along with business analysis you can go on this 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 screening and evaluation may, may have to be done simultaneously not one after the other because it may be too expensive and it also reduces the speed. So, the finally therefore, it is you, you should consider these stages as multiple loops. So, there may be at the market testing stage long before commercialization even is thought of you may have to go back to the screening stage or idea generation stage may actually come from market testing of one product a new idea may come. So, they have to be therefore, you have to think of this particular as a non-linear multiple loops uh, uh, reiterative uh, process. I will now conclude with a concrete example from a famous company uh, about uh, they, they, they make medical devices and you can see how they actually translate this DVF uh, principle that I talked about. So, first they look at the size of the target market the uh, you know that uh, this particular product medical product it actually responds to what kind of incidence of malady. So, if you say undefinable then you get a score of 0. If you normally find that 10,000 
uh, uh, then it is 5. And it, if it is a 1 million occurring incidence of malady, that means it is a widespread malady, there is a great need around the world, then it gets a score of 10 and above. And sometimes it may be an epidemic sort of malady and then of course, it goes to 20. So, you see this particular product uh, got a score of 12, uh, the product that is being talked about. Uh, this is actually a heart sort of pacemaker at a low cost pacemaker. Then product usage, if it is one for many, you know, then obviously the usage, the quantity that can be made and sold will be less. Whereas, if it is one per patient and if the malady that it is addressing is in millions, then that means you can make millions of products. So, obviously, it is more attractive. So, here you have a score of uh, 0 to 5 and if it is actually contributing to health cost effective healthcare, then you see you are, you are again scoring from 0 to 10. This particular one actually got a score of 7 and then application of the product, this particular one you know brain, heart, these are critical. So, this particular one is relating to a sort of a, a brain related, but it is on the spinal area and uh, it also relates to the heart activity, blood flow activity. So, this kind of uh, got a score there. Then it comes the point of differentiation, you know as we said that how different it is with respect to solutions that are now available. And then it comes to the product quality by way of the use of product, the mode of operation, the simplicity, the easy uh, compatibility with the current kind of use. So, what we call backward compatibility all that and then these are the market issues that whether your product, uh, uh, your brand, your company is known to the target market and uh, how well you are regarded as an inventor and how good is your timing so on and so forth. So, this particular product got a score of uh, 145 and uh, the companies actually set up this kind of scores. It will be varying, it, this, this one is for a, a medical product, this will be different if you are actually coming up with a uh, food uh, supplement. There may be a different scoring system will be needed, but the point here is that some kind of scoring which uh, looks at this uh, desirability, feasibility and viability based on that some screening is necessary and then during the process you need to set up a reiterative uh, multiple loops so that you can easily go back and forth, back and forth. The more time you spend in the early stage of a product conceptualization, more you work out the uh, flaws with prototypes and more times you test the prototype, better will be your success in uh, a new product. So, as you see here therefore, we try to stress that managing a product is a uh, process which in some way is simple, but in some way you have to be consistent and persistent to be successful in that. So, that you can do it following an uh, algorithm which is based on uh, this uh, DVF and multiple loops and a reiterative process and understanding that uh, success is a tedious process, uh, is a laborious process. So, it is not a eureka process, uh, it needs to be, uh, you need to put intellectual, physical labor into it, you need to go out into the market, you need to talk to real customers, you need to work within the company in a multifaceted, multitasking group. These are the ways we will succeed. Now, uh, with the point that we discussed uh, today that you need to be uh, compatible with your current uh, resources and the fit, synergy or fit with firms current uh, strategy as well as current capability. In the next session, we will take up the understanding of what fits when, what is do we mean by strategic fit and strategic stretch. Uh, that will be our topic for the uh, next couple of sessions. Thank you.